Welcome to this spoken tutorial on presentation using LaTeX and Beamer. Let me first explain the arrangement that I have on the screen. I have the source file here. I will do the compilation here using PDF LaTeX command. And the resulting output will be seen here in this corner. First, let's see this. We'll come back to this shortly. Let's do this first. The first slide here comes from this source. Begin frame, end frame, title page. And the title page is defined in terms of title, author, and date. The document class that I'm using is Beamer. We have begun the document here. All right, let's go to the so this is the first slide. Let's go to the second one. This is the outline. How is this created? Begin frame, end frame defines one slide. Frame title is outline. It comes here. And then I use the normal itemize command. Let's go to the third slide. This slide talks about other spoken tutorials on LaTeX. There are many spoken tutorials on LaTeX already available. You are encouraged to see them in case you are not comfortable in using LaTeX. These explain how to use LaTeX. This explains how to install and run LaTeX on Windows. And we hope to give more permanent links for all of this from fossey.in. All right. So we have come to the end of so this is the source for this slide. Okay. You can see that we have end of we have come to the end of this document. Now I'm going to show you how to embellish this document with lots of other features that Beamer offers. Let's go to the beginning. Let's go to the top of this file. Now what I'm going to do is whatever change Whatever improvement I'm going to make to this or here, I'm going to add one at a time and then explain. Let's see what happens when I add this command, Beamer team split. Let me cut it. Come back here. Let me save it. And then compile it. PDF LaTeX Beamer. Let me go click this. So you can see that it has created this banner here and some banner here, here also. All right. Then what we do is you come here and use the package. Let's add this Beamer team shadow. Let me cut it. Go here paste it. All of these are pasted above the document command. Let me compile this. All right. Let's see what happens when I click this. Just become bigger. You can see that there is a change of color here. So this is done by the command Beamer team shadow. There are lots of these packages. I'm going to illustrate some of the other features now. We'll give references for future reading as a part of this introduction, as we see here, references for further reading. The outline of this talk is as follows. We'll spend some time on title page, author name, color, logo, etc. Minimal animation that is that you can use to present your talk, two column format, figures and tables, equations, verbatim, and so on. Right. Come back to the beginning. The next one is logo. Let's cut and paste logo from here. This also has to be pasted above the begin document command. This logo, let's see what this looks like. Let me just see it by open 
IATB logo dot PDF. I'm giving the same name over here. When I open it, you can see that this is the image file that I'm talking about. On including this logo command of height one centimeter, it is going to come in this corner. See, let's see what it looks like. Let's click this. You can see that IITB logo has come. Now, this is going to come on every page from now on. All right, next we will add this command. For presentations, sometimes it is useful to make all the lettering bold. So in view of that, I will include this, cut, paste. Actually, I will, I will have to include this before the, after the begin document command. Let me save this. Let me compile it. All right, now watch this. As I click this, it will, all the letters will become bold. You can see that it has become bold. Okay. Then, now I'm going to improve the writing here. For example, it tries to fill lots of things here. Here, the title comes here. Here, the author information comes, but lots of information is coming. Sometimes, I may want to have smaller title here. For example, this space may not be large enough. So what we will do is that is solved using this. For example, this is the running title. Let me cut this. This should come after the command title, between the title command and the actual title. So let me paste it here. You can see that whatever I have pasted now is within square bracket. So let's save it, run it. So as I do it, let's click this, look at this, as I click what happens to this part. You can see that the title has now changed. I have put only the bottom portion because that's what I'm giving within the square bracket, presentation using LaTeX and Beamer. Then I'm saying H space is half a centimeter. I'm giving a space here. And then I have the page number here. It says one by three here, then two by three here, three by three here, and so on. So that is achieved using insert frame number divided by insert total frame number. Now, I will do the same thing for author. So let's come here. Let's cut this. And after author, this comes. Let me save it. Compile it. Click this. You can see Kanan Mokgalia has come. This is what I have given within square bracket here. Now this is going to come on every page. All right. Let's uh, go to the next topic. This is including equations. Okay. So let's, uh, the whole thing is in the form of a frame, a complete frame. What I will do is I'll cut the whole thing. Come back here, go to the bottom of this document, save it. So I have created a new slide. Let's see what this looks like. Okay. So this is where the frame starts. Let us compile this. Now you see that four pages are there. So it still says three. 
If I click this once more, so it becomes 4. So this is the equation containing slide. I'm not going to explain how to write these equations. These are explained in the spoken tutorial that I have created earlier on creating equations. All that I have done is I went to that LaTeX document, cut and pasted it here. That's all. And of course, I have removed the equation numbers. It does not make sense to give equation numbers in a slide. On the other hand, it may be useful for you at times to highlight the color. For example, if I want to, suppose I want to change this into blue, I will do the following. Come here. The command is color blue. And then I have to close this. Let me close this. Save it. Compile it. And click this. You can see that this has become blue. So you may not want to refer to an equation by numbers, but you can say that this is the consider the equation in blue. Or you may want to say that look at the mass balance equation and so on. You want to refer to it by something that people can remember in talks. All right, next, what we will do is, so let me just, I have just finished this. What I will do now is to include animation, okay, which is useful to present information concept by concept. So I have cut, let me paste it here. Okay, let's see what this looks like. All right. So what I have done is, okay, let's first compile it and see what happens. Okay. All right, this is from the spoken tutorial on letter writing. This information also is there. The only difference I have done now is, between begin enumerate and end enumerate, I have put this item plus minus alert. Okay, let's see what this does. See here I have put a command called pass. So the moment I put a command pass, it stops there. Now the begin enumerate starts. So let me just go forward, page down, next page, next page, next page. As I go down, you see that the latest information is in red. All others are in the default color, namely black. All right, I have come to the end of the document. So this is one easy way to create animation where you want to present information a little at a time. Next, what I want to do is change the alerted color to blue. For example, here, the alerted color, this is red. This is known as alerted color. We click this. See this? Alerted color is red. I want to make this alerted color blue so that this is consistent with this color that I have chosen. Okay, let me come here. Cut this. This should go to the beginning of the document before the begin document command. So let me compile it. When I click this, you can see now that the alerted color has become blue. It is achieved through the command set beamer color, alerted text, there is a space here, foreground equals blue, FG equals blue. All right, now what I'm going to do is to show how easy it is to change the color of the entire document. So what I will do is I'll come here. After this slash document class, before the Beamer phrase starts, I will write here brown. Save it. Compile it. You can see that it has become brown. So without any 
work without too much work okay so what I will do is I will take this back to the original color the default color is blue so I don't have to type it all right we are back in blue now I will so let's come here I'll delete this I will now include figures let's cut this come here go to the end of this the last one so let's compile it let's go to the next page so example of a figure is given here all right what are the guidelines in placing this there are some important guidelines we will see it with the next one let's cut this paste this compile it all right so I've got this hints for including figures so let's uh, come to the source where we created the figure this is how we created this figure okay so what are the guidelines do not use floated environments in presentations for example don't say begin figure end figure which you need in the latex document by the way if you want to know about how to include a figure and more about it you have to go to the spoken tutorial on figures and tables or tables and figures so do not use this use include graphics directly so for example include graphics command is used and I'm saying that use the complete width of the text and the file is IITB by the way Beamer already comes with the necessary packages so you don't have to include any package use any package this already included and then we put the whole thing in the center environment and this frame is over do not include caption figure number etc once again people are not going to remember these numbers okay if you want to refer to a previously shown figure show it again all right it does not cost any money to create another slide make a copy of an earlier shown slide and do it again all right that completes the figure and the guidelines so we have come to the end of this document let us now see how to include a two column environment okay let's come here let's go to the end of this document save it what I will do is to make it easier I'll first remove this so that it becomes easy so what I'm going to do is I'm going to give show part of the information okay, let's compile this and see what happens all right so I have this columns ah, it is not saved that is why see this star star so what I will do is uh, let me first save it so this is the problem if you try to compile it without saving the PDF file that you see here does not correspond to what you have here so let's compile this let's come here okay now what you see here corresponds to what you have here All right let me just uh, center it 
So frame title, two columns, and I'm, I'm using the command mini page, and I'm centering it, and I'm using 45% of the text width, begin enumerate, these two, and then end enumerate, and as before, I'm alerting, right? See these two, this is the end of the document. Now what I will do is, I will come and attach whatever I had at the end of this. Here the previous mini page got over. Now I am going to create another mini page. In this mini page, I am going to put this IITB, the same image that we saw earlier. And this mini page also is 45% size. Let's compile this. Uh, let's first save this. Okay. All right. Now let me click this. Now you see it has come. But it has a small problem in that when I go to this page, it shows the first item and also this figure. Although the figure comes later on, it shows this because nowhere have we told LaTeX to show this later. It is perhaps implicit. So for example, if we say that, if we put this information within this item, then we say that show this first and then show this. But nowhere are we saying that this should come later. So one has to be careful of such nuances. One way to solve this problem is to put a pass. So let me compile this, save this. So now it is over. This problem is solved. The first one, then the second one, and then one more. It passes once, and you can see that it has been solved. All right, let's uh, come here. The next one is the table. Okay, let's come and save this. Let's compile this. You can see that a table has come. I have, I'm not going to explain how to create this table. This has already been explained in the spoken tutorial on tables. All that I have done is to cut and to paste it here. You can see here, let's uh, come here. Let's go to this beginning of the frame. It's the same frame, it's the same table that we used earlier. I just cut and pasted. You can see that begin tabular, end tabular, command coming within center environment. Okay, what are the guidelines? Guidelines are similar to figures. So let's see that also. Okay. So the guidelines are here. Let me compile. See this, move forward. Once again, do not use floated environments and presentations. In the spoken tutorial on tables, we put the tabular inside the table environment. Table environment is a floated one. Do not include it here. Insert it directly. For example, we put it directly inside the center environment. Do not include caption, table number, etc. Make a copy of it if required. Okay. Now, here I want to point out the way animation happens, for example, in this slide, it does not alert with a different color. Recall that we used the blue color for alerting. Why does that happen? So that is because we have used a different kind of environment here. Begin itemize and itemize. Within that, we use item plus minus. Previously, we were using the word alert. Recall that. 
we are not using that anymore as a result it just comes in black this is a simpler way to include animation you can pick and choose so this is what i have written here show different animations in the previous slide okay now there is a need to convert this into a handout for example if you try to print this whatever we have here it will produce 24 pages even though there are only 10 pages there are only 10 unique frames but there are 24 pages if you try to print out it will produce 24 pages one way to do that to take care of this is to use a simple switch here called handout if I do this they compile it now there are only 10 pages okay, let's compile this once more now the animation is no longer there if I go to the next page next page next page next page next page and so on right of course what if I want to change the color let me put brown once again You can see that it has changed. So all the parameters here are to be included, separated by commas. So let me just put this back to blue. Compile it. Okay. Now what we will do is, so we have done this. Sometimes you have to include verbatim environment. So let me just uh, take this example. Let's go here. Go to the end. Save it. So this is where the web batting begins. So you can see that the web batting is created. Here I have illustrated with some Scilab commands. I have changed the color here to blue here to blue and so on the command that is the only unique thing that you have to do new thing that you have to do is to say begin frame within square bracket fragile if you don't do that there will be a problem okay so you see this we'll come back and check that so suppose I delete this save it compile it it will come and say that something is not okay so let's put this back fragile save it exit from here compile it once again it has come down right all right now beamer class has lots of information how does one know about other things okay so I have some information here let's go to the bottom okay so essentially that information where to get this extra information is in this slide we'll compile it and we will go through that so the authoritative source for Beamer is this file user guide beamer user guide dot pdf I located it at this point it's also available through this beamer project website and the author by the author of beamer class I'll just illustrate this I've already downloaded this okay it's in that site that I mentioned earlier For example, it, uh, it's a 224 page document, it's a huge document. What I want to show here is you can use the information from here directly. So let's uh, come here. In the very first page, the author talks about how to create simple slides. And he has given the source also. We will cut this, copy. 
Okay, let me minimize this. Let me go to the end of this document. Let me paste it. Save it. Compile it. So let's go to the next page. You can see that whatever we saw there has come here. Here the author has used what is known as the theorem environment. Okay, so for example, begin theorem, end theorem, it comes here. He has also used the frame subtitle that comes here in small letters. And then begin proof, end proof comes here. As he says proof, it opens another window, calls it proof dot. This is how it is defined, this environment is defined. He uses a different alert mechanism. So to want to see this, just go back, remove this handout so that we can see the animations, compile it, okay. So let's go to page number 34. Let's go to page 34. All right, let's see the animation now by going backward. You can see this, you can see this, All right? So what he does here is, let's come here. So these two items are numbered one and the others are numbered two and three. In other words, it is possible to arbitrarily specify the sequence in which the things that you have on the slide will appear. Okay, we don't have time to go through this in more detail. I would suggest that you go through the reference given here to know more about it. This guide has lots of features. This Beamer class has very large number of classes. You may want to try out some of them. Okay, all right. Let me change this back to And out. The problem with the presentation mode, we are now going to the handout mode. Uh, the presentation mode where you show the animations generally takes a lot of time to compile. So typically you would want to work with the handout mode as much as possible and only once in a while when you really want to check it out, you want to use the presentation mode. Finally, of course, when you make the presentation, you may want to use the presentation mode. Okay, and if you want to take a printout, use the handout mode. Let's go to the end. We are almost at the end of the spoken tutorial. Let's acknowledge. In fact, let me just uh, copy the whole thing. Let's come here. Let me just uh, compile it here as usual. Okay, the funding for this spoken tutorial has come from National Mission on Education through ICT. This is the website of this mission. I want to thank you for joining us. This is Kannan Mogalya signing off. We would like to receive your feedback at kannan at iitb.ac.in.